Welcome everyone to the Neji or Neje or Neja laser engraver and how to upgrade it to full Gerbil compatibility for real G-code burning and marking and carving. But before we get into that, let's talk about this laser engraver a little bit. This is uh, one that's available in various guises all over Amazon and eBay and Banggood and AliExpress. And uh, under different brand names, you'll have it under the Naja brand or the Coal Meter brand or Metech or KK Moon or Zeta or whatever. But they're all essentially the same thing. They all are made of this uh, plastic uh, cut plexiglass stuff and they all have a a laser that's actually a repurposed uh blu-ray or dvd burner laser from a thousand milliwatts which is this model all the way down to maybe a hundred milliwatts now i don't necessarily believe this is actually a thousand milliwatts it's probably marketing and i'm betting it's only about 700 but we'll go with that and they're all built from these uh as they are in fact repurposed uh, CD or Blu-ray or DVD player mechanisms. You can see that it's actually got the steppers and everything. And when we get to taking this apart, you'll see that they are old CD drives that somebody has ripped apart and repurposed. So now, upgrading this to uh, full Gerbil compatibility. When you buy this, it comes with some software that I don't have running because it's pretty terrible, and I don't recommend you install the software that comes with it because the SD card is full of viruses. But there are uh, third-party open source projects that have been made to work with this engraver. Now, there are a couple of ways you can actually upgrade this to work with full uh, Gerbil mode software, and it depends a lot on the engraver that you have. The easiest way you can tell that is, uh, without opening anything, is how this thing works with the regular software. Let's do this Big Clive style and just get a piece of scrap paper and draw it. Now, if you've taken your laser and you've drawn something uh, with it using the included program, and the, it comes out and the laser actually draws lines, my big hands are in the way, but like it draws lines and then like we'll do things like that, like all connected series of lines chances are you'll be able to upgrade your laser engraver with software only. It's probably already running a version of the Gerbil software. It's just a really outdated one, but there are how-tos on the web and I'll put them in the video description about how you can actually upgrade one of these to uh, a newer version of Gerbil just with software. And if you have one of those, then you're actually good to go. You don't need to watch the rest of this video. Now, if you've got an engraver that instead of doing things like this, what it does is it actually spits out the uh, uh, the light in sort of like a uh, an old school uh, computer dot matrix printer for anyone who's old enough to remember those where uh, the laser head here moves back and forth so it goes me and then it goes me and what it's actually doing is going to like come over here and draw something and then draw something and then draw something and then draw something and then go back here and knit 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 Nit, 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 nit. something like that, like a series of little dots. That is the kind that is going to require some hardware upgrades because the built-in controller, you can't reflash the software and you will not be able to uh, do this all with software. You actually have to replace the controller board inside. And uh, so let's take a look at how you do that. So we have Yield and Laser Engraver. And uh, it's held together with these screws and these nuts, and they're sort of put in sideways at an angle so that this screw goes through the nut and holds that panel of plexiglass in place. Thankfully, they're pretty easy to uh, get out and to get access. We need to take the back piece off because that's where all the electronics live inside. So, get a screwdriver. This is a... Uh, a hex bit, it says 2.5, I'm guessing that's 2.5 millimeters. And something that I find useful when I'm taking this apart is these little nuts up top, they want to fall out or don't fall out or get stuck. So I actually have a stack of little magnets that I will then put on the nut while I am unscrewing it. Then I take the screw out and see that one is actually stuck there. But if I jostle it loose a little bit, Maybe it'll come out. There we go. And you see it actually comes out on the magnet like that. And I will go ahead and I'll put it in one of these little containers for safekeeping. And then we go around the perimeter of all of the screws on this back panel and do the exact same thing. 
depending on how boring this is, I might fast forward it in post production. But no, actually, this is going pretty fast. So let's let's see how fast I can do this. Obviously, if you had a power screwdriver, uh, that would make getting them out very fast. But I don't recommend you use a power screwdriver when putting it back together because then you could easily over tighten it and crack this uh, plastic uh, case. This plastic case is very, very easy to crack if you put too much pressure on it. I've actually managed to crack it just by using my, my hands with this screwdriver. Okay, one more screw down here to take out. There we go, and this little one right there. It's not, that one's not magnetic. So suppose these screws are not magnetic, but the nuts are, that's good to know. Put the magnet back in its holder. Now we can see that we've got these tabs here and this will actually lift off like that. Now one of the easiest ways to tell if your laser engraver is upgradable is if it's a green board like this, chances are it's not. There's also models that actually have a white circuit board usually, and it may have, uh, I'll see if I can link, put a link to a, a picture or video in the description, but it's going to be a mostly white or beige colored board with two red or orange circuit boards on top of it, something like that. Then that, then uh, if you have the green one like this, it's probably not upgradable, but there's another thing you can actually do to just verify is there's a chip right here and you can't see it uh in the video and there's no way this camera will actually pick it up but i'll put the number in there and i'll read the number is uh i a p one five f two k six one s and uh it's a no-name chip but when you put it into google you do find some discussions on uh some various message boards and this is actually a clone chip from uh the 60 no the 8051 line of Intel chips, uh, but unfortunately, it's not one where you can re, uh, reflash the code. It's once the code is put on there, it's stuck, and there's really nothing you can do about it to change the software. So this actually will have to get pulled out, and it's not that difficult, really. You're going to take it out, you're going to have these four screws around the edge of the board. Uh, they're actually the, on the nut side facing outward. On mine, I've taken mine apart before, but on mine, they were uh, sort of locked in with either some Loctite or some glue or something. So I actually had to uh, put my screwdriver in through the back and hold it in place while I undid the nuts. So you might have to do that or just put some force on it. Eventually, they all came loose. So I'll take them out again. For doing jobs like this that have uh, like really tight spaces, I actually prefer to use a pair of these uh, call them hemostats you can get them anywhere um, obviously they're medical tools so you can get them at medical supply store but you can also get them at places like uh, i got these at harbor freight i think i've also got them from uh, uh veterinarian offices because they'll once they get old they'll throw them out and i know some vets and i just asked like if you're gonna throw them out can i have them and they have actually given me boxes of them for free um after a while they fall apart because they're not meant for heavy duty use but as cheap as they are like almost free if they break you know, you, you get another pair. So that's even better. So let's take off this screw. And this video part should be fast forwarded, I bet, because it is going to be really boring. Number two. See, unfortunately, unlike Big Clive, I do not have an awesome British-esque accent. Well, I suppose he's Scottish. But anyway, I don't have, I don't have a, an accent that's fun to listen to. So... Uh, you just have to listen to my boring voice while I make small talk and get these screws out. And there's another one in the corner here by this switch. I don't have, have that one installed. You will. And I found that actually to get that screw out, the easiest way to get that out will be to undo the uh, start pause button. And that is, uh, it's got a plastic uh, nut at the bottom. And so I'll take my uh, hemostats. You could also use a small pair of needle nose pliers and gently grasp it and turn it counterclockwise until it breaks loose and then you can spin it by hand down unplug it from the board oh you have to hold the board down there so you can get it out and then the switch will come out just like that and there it is uh, place the plastic washer on the bottom so you don't lose it 
and set that aside because we might be able to use that later. I haven't tried it yet, but it's a good little switch, so you never know. And now there are two, uh, three more connections to undo. There is the stepper motor down here connection, and that is going to, uh, sorry, my computer just went to sleep. Okay, just to grab it and unplug it. And uh, they're keyed connectors. Don't worry, they can't go in backwards if you want to reassemble this. Hang on a second. I want to make it so my computer will not go to sleep again on me. Okay, grab the next one, unplug it. And uh, on the third, now my laser was already unplugged, but no normally you'll just then unplug that. Again, key connector there. As long as you don't plug the laser into one of these down here, which are the same, you'll probably be fine. So these are all out. The screws are undone. And now the board simply lifts out like that. And that's all the board is. Uh, it's not a terrible looking board. I don't know a lot about critiquing electronics, but it's a uh, uh, fairly fairly compact. I uh, guess it does its job. I'd like to reuse it if there was a way to flat reflash that chip, but I've been told that you can't. Um, another interesting thing to note is it's got these connectors on, on the thing here on the edge, uh, and they say uh, 0, TX, RX, and V, so that would be ground, transmit, receive, and uh, VCC for power. And uh, there's a model available for this that is Bluetooth enabled, and so chances are this is where the Bluetooth uh, uh, module is soldered. So if you wanted to convert this to Bluetooth, you could probably solder it in there uh, and have it be Bluetooth. And on the other side, you have your connectors for power and for data. Interestingly, on the circuit board, we'll see if we can get it. Oh, uh, no, it's a focus fail. All right, I take my word for it. It actually says up here, not it says date, D-A-T-E, and power for laser. Not data, just date for laser, which I, I, I find pretty endearing, really. And the board itself, for anybody uh, who wants to know, uh, the reference is N-E-J-E-D-K-3-0-0-0. And there's a number 23 up top. I don't know what that means. Is that a revision or something? There's also a version down here, version 3.7.0. But now this is out, we don't need it anymore. Let's set it aside. I'm gonna take a break and have a uh, drink. Now we'll get to the fun parts. We're going to need to take these screws out because we're going to be replacing uh, the board with another board here, but it's not going to fit on these screw standoffs. So let's get these hemostats again and gently turn these. And they're not proper standoffs like in a computer. Uh, they are actually just M3 screws with two M3 bolts threaded uh, over the top to sort of make a, a gap between the bottom of the circuit board and the uh, plastic. So basic book fun functional. I have no problem with that design. Uh, it, it works. I just wish I thought of it first. Oh. Some of these will not want to come off easily because uh, they'll start spinning. So there you go, hold on to it. Oh, uh, 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 this one's problematic. Some of them you'll be able to read through from the other side and uh, and hold the other end while they unscrew. This is unfortunately not one of them. Okay, that one's out. Now it'll just fall through the back of the machine onto the floor, I think. Oh dear, actually, no, this one is, uh, it's caught here. So it looks like we'll have to take off this, uh, this uh, CD carriage here. So, uh, you know what, let's go backwards and uh, you've got these four bolts on the corners in the back here and they actually are holding on this uh, whole uh, mm, carriage uh, stepper movement laser thing. Uh, four nuts, pretty easy to take off. Just take your uh, pliers in there, spin them off. One. And loosen that one. Loosen that one. And loosen that one. You know, I'll, I'll try to move the uh, the work up towards the middle of the camera so that I'm not falling off the uh, the edge of the screen right now. I should probably put some tape down or something to tell me how far I can go. Okay, with all these out, now the uh, stepper motor frame will actually fall down that way. Uh, this little wire here, then we'll just go down through this. Oh, don't get it caught. And this comes out that way. And then you have this... Uh, carriage that holds the laser and the stepper motor and uh, if you look at it like this you can see plainly that it's even got the cutout at the top here for where there would be the center uh, spindle for spinning the disc uh, and uh, on the side here you can see that this is actually 
not purpose built for this. Uh, one of the fun things is you can't really see in the video, but there used to be a ribbon connector coming out here and it's actually been simply snipped off. And then these wires have been soldered onto it. And when you look at parts of the uh, CD carriage down here, you can see evidence of old glue and old wires. Like there used to be um, a wired laser assembly and it was ripped out. So my thought was these were laser assemblies for a CD player or a DVD player or a Blu-ray player that just weren't needed anymore. So they were shipped off to a factory and uh, torn apart and repurposed to do this job. And in fact, this is a Blu-ray laser that's put into a, a housing to try to keep it cool. Uh, this little focus ring is something I got off Thingiverse. I'll put a link to it in the video description if I remember. It just makes adjusting the laser focus a little bit easier because you can grab it like that versus having to use pliers to adjust the focus. Anyway, set that aside for now because we only needed to uh, do that to get the screw out. And now there are all these other screws. We're taking them out because the screw holes will not line up for the board that we are putting inside. So let's hold that with that one and then turn that way. And there we go. And it's now coming out that way. All right. Oh. Lots of little screws. Oh, come on now. Let go, let go. Uh, these two have got locked together, so I will convince them to let go from each other. Oh, come on now. Don't be like that. There we are. There we are. All right. Drop that in there and drop that in there. Okay, that screw comes out. Two more. Same thing here. We'll just uh, free those and free that one. Oh, are you going to cooperate? Yes, you are. Good, those will just spin off quite easily. Two more screws. Uh, well, one, two, two bolts, one more screw. Can't keep them straight. And finally, this. Good. Okay. One and two. See, I almost lost that bolt, uh, or that nut rather. I don't know why I keep saying it in bolt. Uh, but if you do lose them, they're actually standard M3 size uh, nuts. Oh, I found the nut. Um, but you can go to any hardware store and pick them up. They're not a special size. As long as you know that they're M3, then you're all fine. So now we have got this empty area where our board used to sit, but now it's completely free of everything. So now we are going to upgrade the uh, guts of this machine. And we're going to do that by replacing that green board with something I have over here. And it is called a, this particular model goes by the name of a Gerbil Shield is the brand name. Um, and it's on top of a uh, Arduino Uno. This is in fact a knockoff uh, uh, Arduino clone, but it's still the same functionality. And what we will be doing is we'll be mounting this board here and then putting this controller piece on top of it. Mounting it all where the board previously went, connecting everything up so that when it's done, it will look like that. And this board is a uh, Gerbil 0.9 compatible. It's not 1.1 compatible because of the placement of the uh, spindle enable pins, but that's not a huge deal right now. Uh, but it will enable uh, us to run all the steppers and uh, do everything else we need. And it will give us full compatibility with any any uh, Gerbil compatible program, such as uh, Universal G-Code Center, which I'll show you once I get this done. So let's talk about mounting this board first of all. Let's set this aside. We want to mount this board where the other circuit board was. Now, I chose to line it up with the cutout for the old USB connector. The old board sat right here and you can see there's a cutout for the USB connectors. Now, I want to have that line up as much as possible to have it line up right there so that the USB connector is there. Now, you'll see that on this board, there is a, uh, a barrel jack connector for an AC adapter. We're not going to be using that right now. You could, uh, if you wanted to, to power other things, but 
because it's going to be connected to a host computer, we'll get the power through USB. We won't worry about that. So then the first thing to do, if you want to mount it here, is you need to notch out the top of this connector very slightly. Let's see if I can get you a better look. Yeah, you can kind of see it curves out a little bit. Uh, it was flat across to uh, ma match up with that before, but obviously this connector is taller. So I took my uh, multi-tool with a, a little grinding wheel and just ground that out. You could use even, uh, if you're very careful, um, a, a, a utility knife, razor blade knife, or a hobby knife to just sort of whittle it out. It's only soft plastic, not a big deal. You could I suppose even use a drill bit to ream it out. You need to give yourself really only maybe five millimeters of clearance. And what you want is you want this connector to be able to sit flush, uh, poke through there. Otherwise you won't be able to plug the USB connection into it. Once you have that done, you will then need to drill a new series of holes on this piece of plexiglass because the holes on this existing board do not line up, unfortunately. They get close, but they're really not, not lining up properly. And so what I did was I simply set the board down where I wanted it like that and then took a sharp tool. This is actually a, uh, a mechanical screwdriver that the uh, blade has been ground away so it's actually just like a big jabby pointy thing um, and I, I uh, lined up where I wanted it and then reached through the hole and then scratched the circles uh, where I wanted the uh, screw holes to be scratched little circles and then took a drill bit and then popped drill holes where I wanted them to be. You can do that while it's in the machine or you can actually take this plexiglass plate out by undoing the uh, sets of screws and nuts on either side and then the top and this whole thing will come apart like a puzzle and you can take this piece out and drill it and then put it back in but if you have a steady hand there's probably no reason why you couldn't actually drill it uh, while it's in place and then worry about things later so assuming that you've already done that I guess you could go away and do that and pause that but assuming that you've already done that we will then need to uh, figure out a way to mount the uh, circuit board this new circuit board this new Arduino here using those new screw holes. So what we will do, uh, we'll take some of these screws that we took out before. We're using the same screws now. Now there are a couple of lengths of screws. If you have one that's actually super long, this is the one that actually should be used to hold the laser in. So I actually had it screwed in there. Let's set that aside. But we're going to be using the screws that are about this long versus the ones that are about this long, which are See if we can get something like that. You can see they're about half the length. The shorter ones are used to hold the case together, whereas these longer ones are used to hold the circuit board in the top. So there'll be four of these and three nuts for each of them, although we'll only be using, uh, I think, two nuts for each of them, something like that. You know what? I'm missing a screw of the right length, and I think I accidentally put it back here when I reassembled it. So I am going to take this screw out which is undoubtedly that one, put this screw back in. They're all the same thread, so they're very easy to, uh, to uh, lose track of which one is which. But again, it's not a big deal because they're, all, they're uh, only like a few sizes and they're not proprietary. So if you lose one, you can replace it with something about the same. So there, we've got this, all the screws now of the right length that we need. Good, good, good. Now, the other ones before they were all pointed through the back up like that. We are going to do a combination where some of them will be pointed up through the back and some will be pointed through the front. And that's for clearance for some of the components on the circuit board because the way that things are laid out on this, sometimes uh, things won't be able to clear. For example, these holes on the edges here, uh, our, our nuts will be able to clear around these various uh, components. But over here, the nuts, there's so much, uh, uh, there's so little space between this screw here and this. We actually will be putting the uh, screw head this way because it's a little narrower and sort of having the screw at an angle. And same with this one because the nut would hit against the, uh, the AC adapter barrel plug. So we're going to put these two down this way, but these two up this way from the bottom. And make sure you use the new screw holes you've drilled, not the old screw holes. Or else we have to do it all again. So do the same thing that we undid before. We will spin two nuts onto each one of these first ones. Oh. 
suppose if you're really industrious and you had a, uh, a stockpile of the right size, you could actually get some standoffs from an old uh, PC motherboard and use those instead. It would give it a much more professional look. But as it is right now, I can't bother. And besides, we're recycling, right? It's good to recycle. Recycling is always good. Well, let's put these in now. This is another one of these boring parts, so please feel free to fast forward. All right. Now, you don't need to make these super tight, um, just so that they don't wiggle around, but remember, don't tighten them too much. Uh, it's not really going to go anywhere. This thing is not, not shaking around, so... It's not too important to get these super cinched down. They just have to be tight enough so they don't move around. Okay, so now we've got these two. And we'll see when we put this board in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, did I do it wrong? Did I put it in the wrong holes? Did I? Oh, it does not want to go in that one or that one. There we are. Okay. That was a little bit difficult just because of where I put the holes. Uh, so now you can see that they're in. In fact, if you really wanted to uh, stop here, I bet these uh, these particular screw holes, if, if you had nuts here, these probably are not even necessary. I bet everything would be held in place just fine. But as it is, I actually kind of want to have uh, screws in all the important places. So I'm going to take these out now. And remember about, about what I said about this one. So we're going to put the, the uh, screw in this way, and then we're going to spin the nuts on the board itself. Now you might be asking, why can't we do this for all of the screws? Um, it would be much easier to put all the screws on this board, like I'm doing right now, and then drop the board through the screw holes like that in one go, and you know, that would be a much uh, nicer way of doing things. Uh, much faster, much more neat. And the problem, the reason why you can't do that is the length of the screws. With these two screws, if they're if the long side is pointing out downward, they will actually uh, hit the bottom side of the carriage as this goes by and jam it. So you could get shorter screws, I suppose, cut them off, something like that. But right now, just because we want to reuse the same components, we're going to uh, put these one facing up while these other two facing down. Go. here's another one and now finally for this one in the top corner the one right by the Arduino reset button we're going to put this in we're going to put in only one nut here and we're actually going to leave it loose and it's going to rock around that's because this actually has to sit at a bit of an angle you can't see from the camera terrible camera I know um, but uh, it actually has to have some play in it because we don't want it to sit up against any other components. So uh, this needs to be here and loose and floppy like that. So let's set that in. Oh dear, oh dear, did I do something wrong? I may have done something completely wrong. Um, because now, uh, where everything is, it looks like it will be a royal pain in the behind to wedge everything into place because whatever so tuh. I'm going to slack off these two sets of nuts and screws that I've already attached not take them out just 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 slack them off so that they're hanging down like that so that now I will have some clearance to get this in oh dear we're having another another problem here all right, so this nut, the one that I told you to keep all floppy and loose over by the AC adapter jack, we want to still keep it attached, but we're going to spin the nut out really far so that we have enough play to get everything in here. Come on. There we go. All right. So I, I uh, loosened these two to get out of the way. This one was the same, and this one now is really loose and floppy. So now I will put a nut on this one that is all the way in. So you can just flip this over, place the nut here. My hands will strategically get in the way of the camera so you can't see. There we are. Spin it down. Uh, it doesn't have to be too tight, but just enough so it won't fall out. Hold that with your finger and tighten it up so that it's not wobbly. There we go. And then for these two that we slacked off, 
get your little uh, little pliers or whatever you're using, hold them into place like this, reach in from the bottom, and then turn, and you can't see, but we will then uh, sort of thread them up like that until they are tight. There, good. And do the same one, same thing for the one up there. Good. Up, 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 go, go, go. Try to turn both of the uh, nuts together. Um, just it'll make things easier for you. If not, once the bottom nut gets uh, all the way down, you'll have to spin the top one down. But again, this is not really rattling around uh, like a 3D printer, a high-speed milling machine, so it's not going to go loose. And then take your nuts and spin them on the top. Now, this particular uh, knockoff Arduino, the uh, around the screw connections on the top, there's the nuts are not going to be in contact with anything metal, but uh, your mileage may vary depending on what board you have. So before you attach any of these, make sure that they are not going to come in contact with uh, with anything metal that could conceivably short everything out. This, uh, it's not touching anything metal, not touching anything metal. Coming close, but not touching anything metal. Now this one is the final annoying one because it's the one where it's sitting out and, and being all floppy. You won't be able to see in camera, but what I need to do is I need to reach in, hold the nut that's on the bottom, while I then tighten the screw from the top. So I'll use my, maybe you can see that, I'll use my nice long thingies here to hold that in place. There we go, and send it down. Now this one, the nut will be tightened up against the uh, plastic, but not against the board because... Uh, there's some components that might touch, so we, you'll want to keep it away. Or for this one, if you're actually worried, uh, don't have this one at all. That would be fine too. And then gently spin a nut onto this from the back. Hold the one side in with your finger. And this one I, I recommend don't tighten. Just leave it there. It might wiggle a little bit. That's fine. Err on the side of caution with that one. If, it, if, in a, if you're in doubt, just ignore the one in the corner it'll be fine. These other three will hold it in place. So now looking at that, look at that, that's beautiful. We now have replaced uh, this uh, unknown quantity of a board with this compatible industry standard Arduino Uno running a an Atmega 630, uh, come on, 328 uh, uh, microprocessor and fully Arduino compatible. Beautiful, everything. Excellent. So now the next piece is going to be we are going to take this thing called the Gerbil Shield and uh, attach it on the top. There's uh, power wires here. I'm going to disconnect those right now for the moment because I'm just going to get in the way. We'll discuss them in a moment. Undo those, undo these. Power wires fall away, good. Now, the keen observer amongst you will note that this is actually not a genuine Gerbil Shield made, uh, made by the people who invented it and this is not a genuine Arduino made by the people who invented this. Uh, that's part of what makes this uh, project very low cost. I, you can buy a combination of this board, this controller, and these driver chips modules up top for under $20 on eBay. But the problem with that is uh, you are then uh, essentially not reimbursing the people who did all the hard work in designing these. These are just people who took the uh, design and copied it and made low cost copies. But obviously I'm doing exactly that. I'm taking low cost copies just make it cheaper but I also want you to support the people who do this so here's here's my my compromise uh, if you're going to do a project like this the first board you buy be whatever it is buy the brand name so if you've never done any any before even though it will cost probably twice as much money buy a genuine Arduino from the from the Arduino manufacturer buy a genuine Gerbil shield from the genuine manufacturer buy the genuine driver boards from uh, Palo or whoever makes them, buy, the, buy them from the uh, people who took the time to design them and make them so that they get uh, the value from uh, having designed it and made the design. And then you're supporting them. And then if you need to in the future do another one of these or you smoke a board or something like that, then okay, maybe you will do what I do and buy the, the, the uh, knockoff. But I feel like this is a a halfway compromise to both save you money and then also support the uh, hard work that the people do in designing these. So 
that's my top tip is the first time you buy any new piece of hardware, buy the genuine article. And then if you're going to make five, 10 versions later, then maybe think about buying the knockoff if you feel that's okay. So, sorry, rant over. Um, you will assemble this board according to the assembly instructions uh, that uh, you'll, you'll have for the board. The one note you'll have is, uh, see if I can get this off. Underneath the stepper chips, there are going to be three places for jumpers. This controls the micro-stepping. Uh, oh, and by the way, these are uh, da, 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 da. these are A4988 uh, uh, driver modules. There are other ones that probably work just fine, but these are the cheapest. They, they work for only lower current steppers, but these are very low current steppers, so they're fine. Anyway, uh, these control the micro-stepping. Your board will probably not come with any jumpers on these connectors, and there's one set of jumpers under each of these boards. Uh, they control something called micro-stepping, which is the how fine the movement is. Uh, putting all three jumpers on means it's 1 16th micro-stepping. The stepper motors here support that, and so I recommend you put the jumpers on all three of the blocks to get 1 16th micro-stepping. So, you're going to put the jumpers on, you're going to uh, put the driver modules in, pay attention to the orientation of, of your modules. Uh, don't assume that just because on this board and this picture I have this little round silver thing called a potentiometer pointed downward, they might not all be like that. Instead, pop out uh, before, or before you put in your modules, you're going to uh, look and there's going to be uh, pin stuff usually on the back of them and one of them is going to be labeled something called EN or enable and it's going to be in the corner. Make sure that lines up with some silk screening on your board that also says EN or enable. So in this case, it's this corner to this corner and then put them in because they might have, depending on your manufacturer, they might have the uh, components oriented differently. And if you put them backwards, you're going to completely smoke the chip and you'll have a bad day. So we've got this done. Now we are going to line up the pins with our thing here. And once they're all lined up and you know they're all meshed, oh, they are not meshed. You can see that I've actually uh, got one off there. It's very easy to do. There, lined up there, lined up there. Push with consistent force and then it'll jump down, jump down, jump down. Job done. Great, so we now have a fully functional Gerbil board installed into our low-cost uh, laser engraver. Now, there's a downside to this. Although we now have all this compatibility, this uh, back cover now will no longer fit. You can see that because it sticks out um, quite a bit further, you will not be able to use this back cover unless you were to cut a, uh, a hole in it. Um, as it is, I don't mind not using this back cover. One day I might actually cut out a hole uh, for these, but right now I don't really care. So I, ju I just leave the back open, you probably will too. So now we've got our Gerbil board installed. Let's go about uh, reassembling everything else and connecting up the steppers. So this stepper on the bottom carriage, which then this is going to control the up and down, the X, the X axis, I believe. Uh, don't hold me to it because I always get them confused, but I believe X axis. Now the connectors uh, for the steppers that came with this, they're like a, a JST style plastic locking connector, but on Gerbil shields, they're just a bunch of empty header pins. But, however, the holes on this plastic connector will line up with these header pins, and there's four of those and four of those. And on my particular steppers, you mount the white wire up. My, my wires go white, yellow, black, red. So I do the white wires up, and then sort of, uh, let's get there, that's a good shot. And it'll be a little bit iffy, but you'll line it up and gently put that on. You might actually want to uh, put these in before you put the stepper modules in. If not, you'll have to get something like a, a, a little screwdriver and then gently move it past all of this. Come on, you. There we go. Don't push on the wires because you might actually damage the wires, but just push on the plastic part and eventually it'll slot down. So now we have our uh, bottom um, carriage, our, our X axis connected. Now we need to connect our Y axis, which is actually this thing here. So that means we need to reinstall, oh, reinstall the whole laser assembly. So we are going to put this in through the side like so. 
we are going to want to make sure that the wire going to the laser uh, goes through without getting jammed in anything. So there's actually a couple of holes. Uh, you can either put it through this hole here or this hole here. I like putting it through the hole at the top uh, for the laser and then the stepper goes through here, but it's really your preference. It won't make much difference. It's, it's totally up to you. Just make sure that they're that they are through before you put anything on. So put that through there, put this through there. And now we will line up the four bolt holes like this. Now, when you do this, uh, make sure that the it's there's no good angle for me to show you, but this little wire here might get trapped underneath uh, some of the uh, the gubbins and the bolts at the bottom of this. So just make sure it's free and not uh, in the way of anything and jamming anything, and make sure that the the carriage sits flat um, against the bottom. Then take your bolts and put them on. And again, these don't have to be super tight, just enough so that the uh, carriage does not wiggle around. And I find that finger tight is actually completely sufficient for this. Uh, the only really hard one is this one in the corner because you can't reach it. Um, now you might say, well, wait a minute, why didn't you uh, put that on before you put the board on? Well, because we can't put the board on while that carriage is in there because it gets in the way. So fine, whatever. Um, the easiest way you do what you do is you get your pliers or your hemostats or whatever you're doing and simply put that over top and then very gently try eight or nine times in a row and curse a lot and set it down. I'll try to get this in shot, but set it down on top so that it sort of just rests. And once it's there, you're going to reach it with, with two fingers and sort of spin it on. Now, the proper way to do this would be to actually take this whole plastic piece out and work on it on a workbench, but of course, who has that kind of time? Um, I'm rushed, uh, and I don't want to take the time to actually do things right, so we will do it this way. Okay, make sure these are all sufficiently tight. Good, good, good. Uh, pull our laser wire back in. So now we have another stepper uh, connector here. It is going to connect up to here, the Y-axis, and again, same wire order. So in my case, the yellow is on the top. We're going to line it up with this connector at the side with the holes on the connector. And this one will be much easier to get on because there's nothing in the middle and it will slide on. Good, we're there. And now we have a laser wire here. You know, we're going to ignore this for now. Uh, we have to do something special to wire that one up. So in the meantime, let's focus on just making this thing move. So we have like a uh, stepper thing here all wired up now. But if we were to plug in right now, it wouldn't work because while this old board was powered completely by USB, this new board is controlled by USB, but the electricity for the steppers actually comes through this connector here. It, it says 12 volts to 36 volts. It's an, a separate DC input to control the stepper motors. It's mostly here to uh, power much more powerful stepper motors. I suppose you could probably find a way to modify this to run just off the five volt from the computer, but I don't think you want to do that. Oh, that's a little bit loose. Oh, we can't be bothered because it's already all tightened. No, maybe I can't. All right, good. Instead, what I've done is I have uh, made a wiring harness that looks like this. Um, now, it's a bit of a Frankenstein thing, but the important thing is that if you've ever done work on, on computers, a little bit older maybe now, is this is the connector off of a computer uh, power supply uh, that you would uh, use. Uh, actually, this is actually an input connector for a fan. Something like that. Anyway, so uh, your your PC power supply would plug in here and then uh, give the power down there. And I chose that because our build here is going to need something like 12 volts to run the motors, but it still needs 5 volts to run the laser. And you need a pretty beefy 5 volt power supply to uh, to run a laser. I think you need like two amps to run this laser. And I was thinking, what do I have that has that much power and is going to not take much space? So in fact, um, PC power supplies with this four pin Molex, they give you positive 12 and positive five volt at a pretty decent amperage. And then you have this nice modular plug. So I took this uh, fan connector wire thing and ignoring all of this other wiring here right now, uh, I have, uh, where is it? Coming down here, the color code for these is the yellow wire is 12 volts and the black wires are ground and the red is five volts. So I trace the yellow wire down here and actually it's just a bare connector. And then the black wires, 
you can see they actually join here together. You know, I'll write up a schematic and put this up with a video. So you can't, uh, for those of you who can't follow along with this uh, terrible quality webcam, and I can't say I blame you. They join here and then they go up to this wire because we need to send the ground somewhere else too when we get to talking about controlling the laser. But anyway, so both, both ground wires touch and then they go into here. And this yellow one is the 12 volt power wire. And so what we're going to do with this is I'll show you the power supply that we have uh, set up for this. You could use a full-size PC power supply if you have one. Um, I have one of these actually, and it's uh, meant to uh, power internal drives when you want to run them externally. Uh, and it uh, has a power of 12 volts, 2 amps, and 5 volts, 2 amps. Uh, the 5 volts, 2 amps is what is important here to power that laser because it's going to need about this much power. I've tried running this laser. It's the 1000 milliwatt one on a one amp uh, five volt charger and it's just too much. It makes the makes the uh, charger brown out. And even though I have a one and a half and that wasn't quite enough, so for this one I'm using a two amp. The 12 volt two amp is not as important right now, but they kind of come in a combo. And the best thing about this one is I got it at a local uh, uh, junk thrift uh, donation store for, you can't see it there, but I, I assure you that's actually for a dollar. So this power supply that's giving me regulated current at 5 volts and 12 uh, volts is a dollar. Oh, and it's very important. I said regulated there. Some cheapy uh, 5 volt power supplies and 12 volt power supplies for that matter, uh, they are called unregulated. And the important thing to know about that, you can read up on the internet on, and on YouTube about what that means. But the short is that until they have a sufficient power load, they're going to send more than their, their voltage. And so for something like motors, not that big of a deal. But for a laser, that is important because this laser, I don't know that you'd want to push it much much past five and a half volts. So it's important that you have a power supply that will send five volts no matter what and will not have um, have sort of this spike at the very beginning until it gets, a volt, gets voltage. So these sort of PC power supplies is also very good because they are going to be regulated PC power supplies. And if all else fails, use a PC power supply from a desktop computer. You might have one sitting around. You can get them off... Uh, eBay for cheap. You can get them from junk stores for next to nothing because people just want to get rid of them. So they're a great way to get 5 volts and 12 volt power. And so until we talk about the laser power supply, we'll, we'll, we'll gloss over that. Basically, it's the yellow wire and the black wire will then be connected up to these two screw terminals. Now, on this particular model, it's probably with all of them, the uh, ground is on the left side and the positive is on the right. So let's take this wire, because ground is shorter. I will put that in first. I'm going to put it on the outside of this stepper wire. Okay, you put it in this little this little jaw, and then you tighten down this screw, and it makes a uh, nice solid connection there. Some people don't like these, but they're good enough for what we're doing right now. They're pretty ubiquitous. And then by the same token, we have got we've got the uh, the positive wire, 12 volt wire. And tighten that down and then we are good. So in theory at least, this uh, is now ready to go. So if we were to plug it into power and then to connect up to USB, we would actually um, have something that's moving. So let's do that now just to prove it's not lying. Let's leave all this other stuff unconnected. We don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, let me grab a power cable. Here's a power cable for my uh, power supply. Plug it into the power strip. Okay, we are going to get that into power here. You can see now, just a regular PC power supply. Move this up so you can see, and plug this in like that. Oh, make sure it's right, right side up, and good, it's in. Now nothing happens because it's not plugged into anything. So let me get a USB cable now, and we will plug it into my computer and run universal g-code sender i should have probably had this already open and running before i started this video no problem while i am plugging this all in i will get it booted up and if you want to know where universal g-code sender is i will put a link to it in the description but you can also simply google universal g-code sender and it will show up so i am now going to uh get it op running okay and uh actually see everything and I will send a few commands to it and uh, we are going to let's move things by five millimeters up and down and left and right so now we will hopefully see that the laser will move oh wrong direction oh 
interesting. So you'll see that this thing is moving back and forth. Nice. So uh, I was actually trying to move the X, which is this direction, but that's moving that direction. So it means that I have my wiring reversed here. So we are going to unplug the power and we're going to take these two wires and reverse their connection. So I should have been more prepared. I am sorry. So we are now going to put this one here. Good. Jam it down in there and this one down. Come on here. Did I get it right? Oh, I'm off by one pin. Good. And all right. Now they're all connected. Now let's plug in the power supply again. Power. And now, if I've done the things right, you should be able to see the laser move. There we go. And I'm telling it to move five millimeters at a time. And then now. And this is uh, using that 16 uh, step micro stepping. If you had used this laser engraver with the software that came with it, you'll notice instantly a difference in the sound and the smoothness. Whereas the uh, the default software uses no micro stepping, it moves one step at a time and it's very rough. It's like da -da 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 and it just, it's very harsh. This is uh, very nice. And it can move very fast. If you want to. Uh, to move it all the way, we can move it. It's 30, 37 millimeters of travel from one end of the carriage to the other. And you see, see how nice that is compared to the software that came with it. Oh, that was the wrong direction. There we go. Beautiful. Back and forth. Now, I, there's some configuration you will need to do in Gerbil. I will post a, uh, the details in the video description, but for anybody who's listening, you will need to. Uh, uh, calculate or have something they call steps per millimeter. Now I was able to calculate that using uh, a, a, a ruler and a micrometer and things that the steps per millimeter of both of these motors, they're the same motor, is in one step mode, single step mode is 6.75 steps per millimeter and in 16 step micro stepping mode you multiply that by 16 which I think is 108 steps per millimeter. And that is a uh, is uh, enough to uh, get it very accurate for what I'm doing. It might not be completely accurate, but because it's only moving a, a, a few inches, you're not going to lose any detail if it's off by a little bit. And then also, uh, Gerbil is going to want to uh, know how big of a movement area it has. You can move 37 millimeters in each direction. And then it's also going to want to know the maximum movement speed in what's called millimeters per minute. And that's where this Gerbil shield really shines is I've been able to move these motors with this setup with no trouble at all at 3,000 millimeters per second. I think I'm actually only running about 2,000 now just for smoothness, but when you really get these things cranked up, these motors will jump back and forth as fast as you please. They're, they're pretty high resolution motors. But before you start printing and getting things uh, moving, we need to address something about power. Gerbil shields are usually made for big, uh, big step motors, big fat, lumpy things, not these little tiny CD player things. And uh, as such, this is going to send, by default, when you first buy them, it's going to send too much power to the motors. And I don't think it'll burn them out, but it's going to make them very hot and shorten their life. So you're going to need to adjust the power that is being sent by these red uh, stepper controller chips. They call them drivers. You're going to need to adjust the power sent by the drivers to the stepper motors. And that sounds complicated. There are tutorials how to do that on YouTube. But the short of it is you are going to get a multimeter like this. And you are going to, with the pins, you are going to connect one of the pins to ground. This is another case where I should have been very prepared, but I didn't think I would get this far on the video before I stopped again. Because usually I get mad because I've fumbled my words and I, and I start over again. So I'm going to take one of these uh, breadboard wires that's got a male on one end and a female on the other. I'm going to take the female and find a pin on the Gerbil board that says ground or GND. And in fact, the one up by the reset button at the top, 
there says en slash gnd and the one closest to the stepper driver is gnd so i'm going to put that in there i am now going to take one of these great things which are you can get these at radio shack or wherever and they're just a bit of wire with two of alligator clips or crocodile clips whatever you want to call them and i'm going to clip one there and i'm going to clip the other one to the black lead of my multimeter black to black and now this one is going to go to the red lead because it's a red wire of my multi-tester and finally i am going to take a screwdriver because you can't see but these actually have little screwdriver indentations on them and i'm going to clip the crocodile clip to the top of this screwdriver now you will not be able to see the uh probably not see this display because of this terrible camera i'm going to turn my multimeter to two volts and then i'm going to touch the screwdriver to oh you can see that beautifully i just looked at the video i'm going to touch the screwdriver to the very top of this round silver potentiometer thing and you can see it says 0.23 now i've already set this um by default it'll probably be much higher but for these motors with the 12 volts i'm using i found that 0.23 something is very good for these motors and doesn't doesn't uh make them overheat you will turn it to the left clock counterclockwise or anti-clockwise to lower this number you can see it going down now and you will turn it to the right if you want to raise it now how did i come to this uh, magic number that I liked of about 2.4. Well, I did it through the very scientific test of, I turned this all the way down till it was probably down to about like here. And then I tried to, uh, using the software, tried to move one of the motors. And then it didn't move. And then it, when it didn't move, I would turn it up slightly, a little bit more, and check to see if it moved again. And then keep keep turning up until it moved and then i would move it but then gently hold hold the motor with my finger and see how how much force was applying and then i uh i turned it up until it was giving me enough force to feel like it wasn't going to skip and then uh i did i moved it a bunch to make sure uh that the motor wouldn't heat up and in my case having about 2.4 was a really good number for this so i use 2.46 probably 2.4 anything is fine i found that going up above 2.8 starts to get the make the motors go very hot but going below 2.2 means the motors do not have enough force and they tend to skip so for me the magic number here is 2.4 something 2.46 2.47 whatever now, if you want to read the details or know the details about how this actually works, you can. There's great tutorials all over the web. I'm not going to cover that here. Suffice to say that you'll will want to adjust these so you don't burn out your separate motors. And once you've got that done, you actually will be able to unplug everything because this part of it is done. So turn your multimeter to off and put everything away. Da -da. If you don't have a multimeter, get one. This is a cheapy... I got from Adafruit, I think. I've had it for years, and it's it's maybe $20 or something like that. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money for a good one, um, and it doesn't have to be a super fancy one. It needs to be able to do things like we just did voltage, a little bit of amperage, uh, resistance, and then continuity, and that will be the sort of meter that you'll use pretty much every day for the rest of your life. So now we know that we have this thing set up, and assuming you've done the Gerbil software properly, great everything is uh is working now uh everything moves but we still haven't addressed the thing about the laser because our laser is still sitting here just out in the way and it's got nothing to connect it up so remember this big wire that i said we deal with later so i'm going to unplug this and then show you what this is now what this is is uh, it's a way for this gerbil shield board to turn the laser on and off with a little signal now this board itself um, because the uh, power is going into this thing here this top module which is for controlling the motors only it doesn't go towards the bottom and this bottom one is only being powered by usb um, although we used usb power in the old board this one that's really not a proper way to do it most usb authority groups who say you don't do that um, you're pulling too much power 
and you're it's the wrong way to be doing it so you'll want to pull it from a proper power supply and anyway how do you switch it on and off so this is an interesting circuit um that's really simple it uses a uh, something here called a darlington transistor and what this is if you ever heard of what a relay is this is essentially a solid state version of a relay it's a very beefy transistor that switches the electrical flow on and off and the wiring here remember i said that yellow is 12 volts and red is 5 volts so what we've done we've taken the red wire from the power supply and i got a little connector here that's actually the match for this uh laser connector this is actually from a fan uh extension i had but the, the connector is the same you could actually hack the hack the plug off this wire too i chose to keep it but you could do that or put a new kind of plug altogether. regardless we're doing the five the red five volt line from the power supply to the red wire of this to the red wire of this make sure the colors always line up and then the black wire the ground goes through the middle leg of this big uh, transistor the right leg goes to this big mass of ground wires which eventually go to the black wire which go to the ground and they're all soldered together to this green one which then connects up to the gerbil shield and then this final one goes through a 1k ohm resistor that then connects up to the spindle enable pin or spen pin of the gerbil shield so what this is going to allow us to do is that uh, Gerbil, when it wants to turn the laser on, will send a very small signal up this blue wire to this uh, transistor. That's then going to switch not the 5 volt power coming in, it's going to switch the ground going out. This is a very easy trick to make, to make these things work. Uh, because electricity has to flow in a circuit. Uh, it can't have a floating ground or else it won't work. So this controls the ground current. And so to uh, enable the laser, it connects the ground wire here with the ground wire here, which is the ground wire from the power supply, the electrons flow, and then the laser turns on. And then when Gerbil cuts the signal to this little uh, wire, this blue wire here, um, it then closes uh, or opens, turns off this switch, which turns off the ground, which means the power stops flowing, which means the laser turns off. Let's actually get our, uh, our paper here. We're going to reuse the same paper here. And uh, just to get you going about what this thing looks like so we have our darlington transistor here and i'm not even going to use the electrical signal uh, uh, symbols here because you know what if you know what they are you probably already know how to wire a uh, darlington and so i won't bore you but we're going to just draw out what it looks oh that's a terrible looking transistor leg here that is a it's a club foot transistor i don't know anyway so this is the darlington this is the front of our darlington and so let's find our wire where do we put that our big wiring harness you can look at that so this leg here is going to go through a a 1k ohm resistor hang on one second which is then going to go to the spd spn e n pin on the gerbil shield spindle enable pin this middle pin is going to go to ground or negative from the power supply excuse me all right this is going to the ground of the laser when this one is going to go to negative of the power supply there we go and then you solder it up and i i recommend if you're going to leave it bare like this this is cheap heat shrink tubing i think i got it from radio shack or harbor freight or something like that this stuff is brilliant it's much better than electrical tape you just cut off what you need slide it down there and then use a cigarette lighter or a hot air gun or a hot soldering iron put it near it and it will shrink it down it means you won't get any short circuits it'll be protected from water it's just brilliant i use it everywhere it's cheap i recommend everybody using it and then get that all together and then what you'll do going back to our, our cutter here let's connect these wires again so remember the uh, yellow wires are 12 volts so the positive goes to the one on the right come on now get in there oh i was trying to plug it in completely the wrong spot wow i have been talking for too long and i'm obviously not paying attention i should not be qualified to work with lasers in this state now watch me burn my face off when we turn this thing on. It will explode. I know it will. 
Oh. So ground to ground and plus 12 to plus 12. Now this thing, to get it out, up out of the way, I have actually drilled another little hole in the plastic here. And this little hole is uh, for nothing else than to... Oh, got a big nest of wires here. Um, it's going to just so I can ma uh, mount the little transistor up there so it won't go flopping all around. So let me find my little screw that I put in there. Screw, where are you? There you are, little screw. All right, get a proper screwdriver. Now, for some of these transistors, if they're uh, doing a lot of uh, power switching or, or, or voltage switching or something like that uh, rapidly, you'll want to mount them to a metal heat sink. But because this is not going to be turning off quickly, we're not doing so this thing you've heard called PWM. We're not doing that. This is simply on and off. This thing will probably not get hot, and what heat it produces will get dissipated by this plastic case. And this plastic case is non-conductive, so there's no shorting. So it's just there to keep it out of the way and keep it from bumping around and falling around. And then we are going to take this blue wire, which goes to the resistor to the uh, left leg of the transistor. We're going to put it on the spindle enable pin, like so. Good. And now finally, the most happy part, we are going to take our laser and we are going to carefully grab the wire and plug it in like that. And please do make sure that your wire colors match up, that you're, that you're connecting red to red and black to black if you do it in reverse. I don't know what would happen, but I bet it would be bad. So good, look at all of that. We actually have, I think it's all done. So let me take another uh, drink. delicious and uh put the power in again and let's see now um let's get to a thing where you can actually uh this angle is all wrong i want you to be able to see the laser when it turns on to prove i'm not a liar good see multimeters they're useful for everything you should get one if you don't have one and i am now going to uh, follow proper safety regulations and use this stylish pair of laser glasses that came free with a laser. So they came free, so you know they must be good quality. Actually, I have checked them. They're fairly decent. I've tried to shine this laser through them, and it will not transmit any of the beam, really, through these lenses. So although they're terribly ugly and scratched and awful, they do seem to work. Always wear safety gear when you're working with lasers, even if you don't think it's bright enough to damage your eyes. This uh, operates uh, at a frequency where it doesn't look like it's uh, very bright, but it can actually toast your eyes. So always wear your safety glasses. Now, the best part is because you're watching this over a camera, the camera won't care. So now I am going to send a control signal, which for Gerbil is the M3 signal, which would be M3S255, uh, which will trigger the laser to turn on and let's see if I have done everything right there you see that dot that is the laser signal and it's burning a hole in that plastic so I'm going to send m5 command turn it off brilliant and you can see it put a little uh, burn mark in uh, this piece of uh, masking tape that I keep on top of the little thing but uh you've got it and now uh, I wonder if I can load a little test thing in here just to show you how awesome it is, let's uh, let's load a little uh, test program in here. Uh, what's a good one? What's this one? Let's try this thing. I don't even know what this is. Uh, we'll actually do be crazy, and we're going to burn it right on that piece of uh, plastic because or piece of a uh, masking tape because that's what it's there for. I don't care. And for funsies, let's even turn the light off. There we go. Now we are going to send a file and... Oh! That was a miscalibration, but don't worry about that. You can see now it's burning beautifully into our piece of uh, tape. Beautiful, isn't it? Now we're going to cancel that before we uh, melt our thing and turn the laser off. Please turn off, please turn off. If, it, if you find a thing where uh, the laser doesn't want to respond, there's a reset button on the back. Uh, just find, oh, it's over here. It isn't it? I can't find the bloody reset button. There we go. You can set the, 
po uh, push the reset button on the back. I'm going to show you where it is. It's this thing right here, and it resets the whole Arduino. So if anything ever happens, you need to turn the laser off now. Bop that reset button. It will turn off the laser. And uh, so, yeah, you have now uh, turned your laser engraver from something that uses only a silly little program that just goes me, 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 to now you can actually do full Gerbil engraving, full Gerbil compatibility with uh, programs like Universal G Code Sender. So, uh, where do we go from here? Obviously now, um, uh, you could start using it like it is. But the other things I want to do in the future with this are uh, I want to add a variable height adjustment uh, to either the laser to make it go down so I can vary the focus without having to fiddle with the ring, or to move the platform up either way to so I can change the, uh, the distance between the laser and the thing that I'm uh, trying to laze automatically. And I, will, I would do that so that you can programmatically get the proper focus, or if you're trying to maybe cut something, you can do several little layers and get lower and lower and lower. That's one of the things that I'll probably be doing in the future. Um, the other big thing is that uh, some of the models uh, that look like this but are different, they have a fan off to the side. Um, I think that fan for this is a really good idea. One, to get rid of all the smoke and also to cool down this motors and to cool down the laser because there's no fan on this one. So I will be uh, mounting a fan to this in the future. Other various things will be probably adding maybe Bluetooth to it. Um, the neat thing about this uh, motor shield and why I would say you get this one over ones that have maybe only two stepper motors uh, connectors is this has connections for four which means you have X and Y, but then you also have, you could have the Z axis and up and down axis. And, an, and another one here, which you could either do to uh, copy another axis, they call it a clonable axis, or to run another motor. And I don't know what you use that for, but which means you can run four motors off of this uh, board. And you might say, oh, I'm never going to run four motors off this. Why do I need that? Well, this little laser engraver, although it's fun, you are going to quickly outgrow it. Uh, it only does a, a build area of 37 uh, millimeter square, which is, oh, just nothing. Uh, just barely. It's tiny. You saw it on, on the on the picture. So you can't really do very much. And also, uh, because of, of the build, this is in the way. Unless you take the top off, you can't put a bigger laser in because it's going to hit the top. Um, there's just not a lot of space. There's not a lot of compatibility. So I think eventually you're going to outgrow this. And the beauty about doing uh, the modification this way is uh, you can take this Gerbil Shield take it out and use it in a bigger design when you if you want to build your own uh, CNC machine you could use this exact same controller maybe even take the same laser take it somewhere else and then you could pop this old board back in and then at least you have a still a working thing it's not broken anymore uh, when you want to upgrade and that's a, a beautiful thing so you're not going to be wasting anything so you know what if uh, there's sufficient interest and uh, if I if I can uh, you know pay attention long enough I'll post some videos about how to actually upgrade this further but in the meantime uh, enjoy your new fully gerbil compatible laser engraver